<laughs> Let me just grab out the ASCII text. And what I'll do is I'll say, just give me the first argument, and we'll just look at them one at a time. So this awk basically says separate the fields by sem by a colon and print out the first field. And then for each one of those, we'll say while read file uh, do less file done. So this will take each file name and run it through less. And I can just hit Q to go through them. Okay, so that's, I'm sorry, that's the access file. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> this is, <laughs> if you go to, if, what is it, you tell to, uh, you tell net to tau.blinkinglights.nl and it plays Star Wars and ASCII art. So somebody must have catted that, found a way to pipe that output to the input of, of uh, this netcat receiving. It's only displaying some escape sequences uh, because of the way ASCII animation works. It wouldn't actually display unless. So if I catted this out, it would play through the animation probably very quickly. Okay, here it is again. Foo bar. Uh, somebody's ethernet output. <laughs> Yana Cherda Oh, it's Russian. Yana Cherdaki Liju This is weird. Russian's normally in Cyrillic characters, but this is in Latin characters, so it's been transliterated. I can't it's hard to read when it ironically enough, it's harder for me to read it this way. Uh Yana Cherdaki Liju I don't something. Anyways. I'll have to look that up later. Some Russian song, looks like. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you need no longer worry about the future. This time tomorrow, you'll be dead. Oh, my goodness. Looks like that didn't happen. Okay, this is something. So, these are escape codes. So, what I'll need to do, since Les won't display this, Unless I give it a special option. I'm not sure. Oh, hey! Hey, it works. Okay, so unless you can actually say colon and then dash and then dash again and then whatever command line option you'd want to give it. So in this case, I gave it an R to display control characters uh, properly. If I, I can reverse that. So that's taking the uh, escape characters for displaying ANSI color and displaying it within less. So I've never done that before. I've done that from the command line, but I didn't know that you could switch to that mode like that. That's pretty cool. You will be surrounded by luxury. This uses, this looks like it uses the LLL cat program, which I posted a tip for recently, which is pretty funny. Got another one. You ought to be more careful. You love your love could drag on for years and years. These are like Chinese fortune cookies. There's probably just out of the fortune program or something. Again, it uses the lull cat program to create the rainbow like effect. Another one. <laughs> okay, so yeah, see this somebody's using the lull cat program which uh, you can search for online. Pretty neat little program that just creates a rainbow of output. You can actually animate it even, and it'll animate like a rainbow cycling across each line of text. Uh, those look like squid servers. Yeah, this port, 30, uh, 3128, that's the port for the squid proxy. So these are proxy servers, uh, probably that somebody just wanted to share the love of proxies, which is fine. So you guys can pause it and search for that stuff. Actually, it's all the same one, so I'm not sure what... 
Not sure what that stuff is. Huh. Have to look up that later. Hello. Important stuff. Ah, this is a VimRC file. So somebody posted their VimRC. It's good they didn't post their Vim info because then I'd be able to have some insight into s some of the files they've edited and stuff. <laughs> Even maybe your VimRC will give you some insight, so you gotta be careful. See, some of this stuff people probably carelessly upload not thinking about the potential consequences of sharing it. Um, and I was, it, you know, it made for an interesting experiment to do this. Uh, CLI magic test, it worked. Uh, Ethernet info again. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Here's where somebody has actually taken their browser and they've they've so they typed in aquarium.suso.com colon 4000 into their browser like this uh, thinking that they could get to it with their web browser instead of you know and it would do anything of course the netcat that I set up doesn't actually respond back with proper HTTP responses so it doesn't do anything but basically they just put in something like this and you know they would have seen it hang there forever because the browser sends off uh, the headers and then it doesn't send anything back so it's indefinitely waiting for the response eventually it'll time out uh, if you hit stop it'll also time out and just to give you an example uh, I mean basically if you've never seen it before this is what this is what one half of a protocol looks like and the protocols that you use on the internet for like web page retrieval and stuff uh, you can do the same thing by just telnetting to the port or using netcat uh, to go to the port and running the commands manually as a system administrator I, I do this quite a bit just to test you know whether a server is available or not um, just to show you let's see so let's let's go to What's a good one? Um, oh, I don't know. Now I can't think of one. Okay, well, I'll go with CLI Magic. Okay. So, well, he, okay, let me do this with the dash V so you can kind of get an idea of. So that shows that it opened the connection, and now it's ready for me to actually type in an HTTP request. So an HTTP 1.0 request would be to say get, and then this is the this is the path this slash here, and then you put a space and the protocol. You pretty much always want to use HTTP 1.1. You can also use 1.0 or 0.9, but those are becoming less and less supported and don't support things like virtual hosting. So on the next line, you have to give it the host that you're connecting to so that if they're doing something called name-based virtual hosting, it goes to the proper web page, uh, which in this case, it is doing that. So those are the pretty much the only two header lines that are required uh, in HTTP 1.1. Uh, after this, you can type in stuff like user, agent, and this would be the name of the web browser. So uh, I could type in netcat, whatever. That's enough. And then once I'm done, I give a blank line, and then the server gives its response back, starting with this HTTP 1.1 200 OK. Uh, and then some header lines like what type of server it is, it's running on CentOS. These are, you know, these are customizable on the server end. So all the header lines go up to here. And then after that, there's a blank line, and then the start of the actual web page content. So every time you make a request for a web page, an image, a JavaScript, a Flash, anything that's going through HTTP, it goes through this process. Lightning quick, you don't even really notice it um, happening. And other protocols work similarly, um, although some of them are a bit more interactive and have multiple steps to them, like you know when you log in to your mail or something through IMAP or POP. So
so all right so showed you that that's neat and it's good to know I think too many people don't know uh, how the protocols work ah okay so this is a program called Cowsay that he piped in he so he piped fortune into Cowsay into lolcat what is this I don't even well that's probably not fortune that's probably just him typing in <laughs> another one somebody got carried away <laughs> I like how the <laughs> the utter has a W that's funny hello yeah get so here somebody obviously just typed in you know <laughs> they typed in an HTTP request as if it was going to work this one's interesting not sure what this is it almost looks like firewall data or something weights or topology okay I guess it's topology information or topographical map or something hmm <laughs> some of these you know it's like how would I know what they are maybe I could you know if this was a standard file maybe just searching for that online might yield something and put it in double quotes so it matches it literally input hidden output and it's not exactly the same okay maybe it's somebody's own file format or something uh, here's another browser request another browser request but you can see this one's actually for the fave icon so the the browser also tried to do the fave icon is the is basically this thing right here uh, whenever your browser goes to a new website it tries to pick up the fave icon and so this is the browser also doing a request for that kind of funny oh this is interesting x forwarded for is a, a um, proxy header so somebody this doesn't look legitimate because I don't think anybody would have this IP address uh, but basically this is saying that the proxy made the request on behalf of this IP uh, but yeah I don't think that that's that's not probably not a valid IP address I can do who is look up on it see where it's assigned to anybody okay AT&T I don't know. I kind of doubt that anybody actually got really got that one. I mean, that would be like the awesomest IP address in the world, next to like, you know, three dot one dot four dot one or one dot two dot three dot four or something like that. So basically, the equivalent. More power to you if you can do it. Let's actually, you know what? We can try pinging that. I have nmap installed? No. No. Okay. Moving right along. Test. Ooh, somebody wants me to go to a YouTube video. This might be dangerous. I apologize if there's any uh, profanity or anything in this video I'm about to go to. Right now, you guys are probably criticizing me for not piping. Uh, this video directly uh, into M player on the command line or something, but hey, can't be perfect. Uh oh, an advertisement. Professor Dante here. Your Let's we'll, we'll turn that down for a second, and I'll move on to the next one. Oh boy, more YouTube videos. Yeah. Uh, 